Hello again. This is a mini review of a gun from my collection. What this is, is a CO2 version of a Beretta 92FS, which is probably very familiar to most of you as being a, the official sidearm of the American Army now, uh, as well as several other armies and police forces all over the world, so it's a very popular gun. Um, what, well, before we go any further, um, let's just show that it's empty, so there's no gas in it, as you can see, and there's no cylinder in it, so there we are, it's empty. Um, right, what I've done with this particular one, because it's my own personal one, it's not borrowed from a store, is I've polished the barrel. You can see there, look, I've, uh, it's a very simple thing to do. If you remove the screw, which is here, if you can see it, just that screw, just unscrew it, and then you'll be able to remove the barrel shroud completely. The whole of the top slide here comes completely off the end, and then inside to get at the uh, barrel and the barrel shroud, which is what I've actually polished, you just undo two screws, and the whole thing comes to pieces. It's very, very simple. Just take the barrel out of the shroud and then do what you want with the barrel shroud, in which case I just polished it, and then just reassemble it, make sure it's absolutely scrupulously clean because the barrel has got rubber O-rings at both ends and the rubber O-ring at this end is very, very important because that seals against the front of the magazine, the little eight-shot magazines. So as long as you work very cleanly, you'll be okay. Right, for those of you who are not familiar with it, this gun is one of the better quality ones that Umarex make. They make, obviously, lots of copies of lots of different popular guns. This one is all metal, apart from the, the grip scales here. And you can get it in black like this. This is black paint. It's not a chemical treatment, it's paint, but very well put on. Um, with plastic grip scales, or you can get it in nickel finish, which looks very attractive, and they even do one uh, with wooden scales. But by the time you've gone up from this base model, this is the basic model, up to the nickel version with the wooden grip scales, you've probably ha added best part of a hundred pounds to the cost of the thing. So it's up to you. Um, the nickel one with the grip scales is very, very nice. I must admit, I'd like one, but I can't really justify the extra hundred quid for something that's not going to shoot any better. Anyway, onto that. You'll notice that on this gun there is a actual genuine Numerex um, laser, um, which is designed for this particular gun. Uh, so where's the laser beam? Oh, there it is, on my hand. Uh, it doesn't look very good on the video, but in fact it's a nice, it's a nice bright small spot, and it works extremely well. I've zeroed it for 10 meters, which is the maximum range I reckon I'd use this on. Um, it is intended, as you probably gathered, as a, just as a CO2 plinking gun, just a fun gun. But it's it's made extremely well for a plinking gun, and I'll come on to that in a, a little while. It runs off standard CO2 cartridges, 12 gram cartridges, like this. Um, the procedure for loading it with gas, um, I'll just go through it, even though I don't actually want to charge it up at the minute. Um, open the foot, which this here, which resembles the bottom of the magazine on the real gun. Take the scale off by popping the little button on the other side, which is uh, where the magazine release button actually is on the real thing. Take your capsule, as I believe they're correctly called, and some silicon gun oil. I won't actually do it, but the idea is every time you load a, a capsule into a CO2 gun, you should always put a drop of silicone oil on the tip. This helps to keep the seals from wearing out too quickly. And what in fact happens is the seals absorb, when they're under pressure, when you've actually got uh, the gun pressurized up with, with gas, the seals absorb the, the CO2. And when you degas the gun and it comes back to, as it were, atmospheric pressure, it takes a while for that CO2 gas to come out of the O-rings and so they can sometimes not seal as well as you'd want them to seal once if you just degas it and regas it. Sometimes it doesn't work quite so well. Um, so you just have to be a little bit careful about that and watch out and in case if you start getting uh, gas leaks, don't immediately think that the gun's broken. It might just be that the rubber O-ring has just got tired 
from being gassed and degassed so many times and you just need to replace the actual um, gas valve ring. Spares are available uh, from Umarex and from various other sources. I think you probably might even find them on eBay. But when I was talking to you, what I just did was I put the capsule in and I tightened up this brass uh, pressure uh, spindle, whatever you want to call it, the thing that makes the thing go up tight. And with this particular one, I really have to put some pressure on it. I really do have to get that as tight as I possibly can without hurting my finger because um, if I don't, it won't actually break the seal properly. The actual sharp little um, spear that's in the top here, at the bottom of the valve, isn't very long. And it, sometimes you get with these gas uh, capsules, the actual seal at the top can be very, very thick. So you can get a situation where it's only just pierced and the gas doesn't come out sufficiently quickly for you to be able to rapid fire the gun. What you find is you get one shot at full power and then the rest of them are just squibs because the gas can't come out of the capsule quickly enough to replenish the pressure in the valve. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Let's, see, let's show you this if I can. That's a typical, quite a good piercing, that one of this particular uh, cylinder. This is a genuine Crossman one. And being a genuine Crossman one, it's also lubricated. They actually put some silicon lubricant or something inside the capsule. So it, it keeps the whole of the gas system lubricated. Um, that's always a good idea. Putting silicon oil on top of the, the uh, uh, capsule before you load it is probably icing on the cake, but it's, it's better to do it than not to do it. Uh, you can get away with it once or twice not doing it, but uh, just be watch, watching out for those seals, like I said. Anyway, that's by the by. What you would do is once you've got the capsule in there, you would just... I normally put the scale back on, uh, just in case any gas does come out and it goes in my direction, because don't forget the escaping CO2 gas is very, very cold. You can get frostbite off it if you're not careful. And then what I do is I hold the gun like this and I slam that shut and that pierces the capsule nicely. You don't even hear a hiss normally with this gun. Uh, what can I tell you? Well, if you're not familiar with Umarex guns, the better quality ones that they produce use these um, eight-shot magazines. Okay? Uh, they are quite expensive. In the UK they retail for about, about £20 for three. Um, you used to get, when you bought these things new, you used to get two of these in the package. Now I think they've been a bit mean about it and you only get one with certain models. I'm not sure about this one but I know I've seen some new Umarex guns and they've only got one of these magazines in rather than two which I think is a bit stingy of them but there you go. Um, obviously when you buy the gun new you get a nice case for it. Um, here we are look the actual nice hard quality hard case it's, you know, it's not fantastic, but it's got the Beretta logo on it. It's got the usual Brocock importer sticker on there, just to make sure you realise it's not a grey import. It's a, it's a genuine thing. You get a nice book in several languages that gives you all the information you could possibly want. Well, most of it anyway. Um, facts and figures, a little list of accessories you can buy for it all of which are very expensive. Um, if you want to add to the gun, you'll be surprised at the cost of some of these things. Uh, they're unnecessarily expensive in my view, and I, it's a shame because the gun itself is very, very good uh, in build quality and everything else, and I think they kind of spoil it by making the accessory add-ons way expensive for what they actually are. You've already spent a bundle of money on the gun. They might have, uh, at, re at least make the um, little accessories like you can actually take you can uh, take the back side off there's a grub screw in the middle right in there inside let's see if you can see it i'll come up here a bit inside there in the actual slot there's a little grub screw you can loosen it off you've got windage adjustment then backwards and forwards the site left to right so you can get it lined up but also you can take the whole thing off and there is in fact an accessory rail which you can put on along the top, which will enable you to mount a telescopic sight or a red dot or something like that, whatever you fancy. Um, with, this is my personal one, so what I've done, if you can see it against my hand here, I'll just show you the foresight. I found it was difficult to pick this foresight up um, when it was just black on black. The gap between 
the foresight and the actual notch is not great enough in my view. I'm, rather than taking a file to it, what I decided to do was just put a bit of yellow paint on there as an experiment and it does actually work much, much better. Oh, another tip for you, if you are going to take the thing to pieces, be careful of the front sight because it just falls straight out and you can easily lose it. Um, just watch out for that. There's nothing holding it in. There's just a little foot on the other side. There's a slot in the top there and a foot and it'll just come away. As soon as you take the barrel shroud out, it'll just drop out. Putting it back together again, you have to put it together kind of upside down. You'll get the hang of it anyway. You know what to do.